If you have a PC, you can play TDU Solar Crown right now for free. Just yesterday, KT Racing and Nacon Surprise dropped a free demo for Solar Crown that is available to anyone on PC until the 17th of this month. And I've spent a bit of time with it so far, paired with some time in the earlier playtests as well, and I want to finally share my own thoughts on the game at this stage in its development. Now, originally, I was thinking that I would wait until the end of the demo to make a thoughts video like this, but I figure not everybody knows this demo is even happening, and it would be good to spread the word and make this as a sort of PSA that Solar Crown is free to try out right now. And for one final disclaimer before we dive into the video properly, these are just my own thoughts and opinions. I present them with absolutely no sense of authority, and I completely expect that some of you will disagree with me on some topics. But hey, that's the beauty of gaming. We've all got different tastes, and there's something for everyone. Alright, now there is one aspect of racing games that is always more important than anything else the handling. You can make the coolest game in the world, but if the driving sucks, it won't be any fun to play. And I have a lot of mixed opinions here, but let's start with the good. Solar Crown has gone for a Simcade handling feel, where the cars are relatively grounded and behave in broad strokes how real cars behave. You know, this isn't full arcade like Need for Speed or Burnout, where you've got big nitrous tanks and drift buttons and cars that can stop on a dime with no momentum whatsoever. However, Solar Crown is clearly not a full sim either. The creative director made some pretty strong statements earlier that they were targeting a more simulation-focused handling model, and even specifically called out Forza Horizon for being more arcadey than what they were shooting for. But I don't really think that's where they've landed, and would actually argue that Horizon feels quite a bit more sim than Solar Crown in most aspects. The vehicles in Solar Crown do have momentum and weight to them, and they feel properly responsive in many areas, and the braking and understeer at speed actually all feel pretty decent and more sim focused. But the cars do still have a lot of grip and can stop pretty dang quick at lower speeds with a ton of front turn-in ability that you just wouldn't see on a real car. I can barely get this upgraded 370 to maintain a slide because I'm just fighting with the car wanting to get back into its track, I guess you could say. That's mostly okay though, I mean Horizon adds a ton of front grip too, it just kind of makes cars feel better when they don't understeer. So largely I'm okay with the handling difficulty and model that they've chosen because it does still feel consistent and reliable where I can trust what the car is going to do with one major exception. My one big gripe comes from this terrible counter-steer feeling that so many games seem to struggle with. See, when you get into a slide, the game is so afraid to let the car just snap back the other way that it ends up locking you into this bad understeer drift that you have no control over. And this also can lead to a pretty unpredictable snap oversteer moment, where you're trying to get the car to grip up and transition the other direction, but you're just fighting the controls until finally it gives and then overcorrects. On controller specifically, the game actually just won't let me use all of my steering angle when counter steering, which is critical to controlling drifting. So it seems more like a problem with the controller tuning, not necessarily the physics, and that does mean it's more likely to be something they can work on, because while speed sensitive steering is good, they also need to still give the car full lock in counter steer when it's sliding. Now you might be asking, does this still happen on a wheel? And yeah, I actually spent some time playing Solar Crown in my sim rig, and I was really impressed. This game feels shockingly good on a wheel, and a lot of my more minor gripes with the handling kind of went away, which confirms my theory that they just need to dial in the controller tuning more, not necessarily change the physics. When drifting, that lack of counter steer ability went away completely, but still showed off just how grippy the cars were, and how badly they still just want to kind of stay in their track, instead of letting me break traction and keep the car sideways. I'd love to see a bit more weight shift and momentum here, and less grip on all the tires. Let the weight move the car more. But alright, even though I could talk about handling for another 20 plus minutes, we should move on to some other aspects of the game, 
and I really need to bring up the car audio. I was blown away by the sound of this 370Z. The raw engine noise feels alive, dynamic, and punchy, and not at all synthesized. It's very good, but the biggest example I want to point to here that really speaks to the depth of the audio in the game is this blow-off valve. The sound of a real blow-off valve is very dynamic and dependent on what the engine is doing and how much boost pressure is currently in the intake, but almost no other game in history gets that right. They just have one stereotypical blow-off valve sound that plays on repeat no matter how much boost you've built or how fast you grab the gear or whatever else, and it has always driven me crazy. But Solar Crown nails this. I mean, I'm gonna shut up for a second and just let the audio play while I drive. So at no point did you hear two of the same blow-off valve sounds. It was dynamic and changed based on what the engine was doing, and that breathes so much life into the car. If all the cars have this level of depth and care put into the audio, this alone is something that puts Solar Crown above pretty much any other racing game out there. Alright, now let's talk for a bit about the map, Hong Kong Island. When the location was first revealed, I was definitely excited about the Asian theme and getting a big proper city to drive around in, and as someone who actually took Chinese language classes for about a decade, I love that we're getting a game set on Hong Kong Island, but I was also bummed about the size of the map. TDU 1 and 2 were absolutely massive, and this island pales in comparison. But I was still hoping that the density and perhaps more accurate 1 to 1 scaling of more roads would help the map feel bigger and more densely packed. Aesthetically, I think the map is very well detailed, and actually gorgeous and extremely fun to drive through. But it does feel very small when you compare it to the previous games in the series. Now for what it's worth, this demo only gives us access to roughly half of the island, but of course that still gives you a decent feel and perspective of how big the whole map is going to be. I'm not saying it's too small for a racing game in general, and there is still a lot of fun detail that I'll talk about in a minute, but it just feels too small for a TDU game. And I think it's one of those aspects of the original TDU DNA that we've kind of lost. With that aside though, again, aesthetically, the map is gorgeous, and I just love having a big modern city to drive through with a realistic highway network and all these incredible little pockets of fun driving. Really early on, I ended up just stumbling across an underground parking garage that turned out to be absolutely massive with multiple levels and what looked like some really fun routes to race or drift through. There's also a full-on racetrack in the map that's pretty well designed. I had a blast just hot lapping it in my 370 on my wheel. There is so much beautiful scenery and so much good car-centric infrastructure, with of course the gas stations, parking areas, warehouses and shipping docks, highway networks, curvy mountain roads, and more. The map might feel small compared to its older brothers, but they have done a really good job of packing in a lot of variety and some really cool areas. I think the map is very well designed, just small. And there is one more glaring issue here. Hong Kong Island is a complete ghost town, and it really pulls me out of the immersion when I'm driving through this dense concrete jungle without a single human in sight. I know that from a development perspective, this is something that takes up a lot of time and a lot of resources for something that really doesn't affect gameplay at all, but it's just so important in selling the experience and helping the world feel alive. And it's something that, for me anyway, is so hard to ignore when I'm playing. So hopefully this is something they're thinking about and maybe we'll add either before release or in some post-launch update, because it would mean a lot to me to see Hong Kong Island filled with people. 
They've put so much energy and focus into making Solar Crown a very immersive experience, with the working turn signals, windows, wipers, and more, all in a recreation of a real world place that's always online with other players. But then when you notice that there's no people walking the streets and pretty sparse vehicle traffic, it just makes it feel so empty and it pulls you right out of the immersion. But let's move on from that and talk about the actual gameplay loop itself. And this is something that might improve as time progresses, but right now it's effectively impossible to do any racing because the servers are just not able to keep up. Which, yeah, you know, obviously this is an early, not finished version of Solar Crown, but I do think it speaks to the problems of always online, very socially focused games. If it works, it could be really cool, and I'm all for a very social and PvP focused racing game. I genuinely think it's a really interesting concept, but there just hasn't been much to do because most of the PvP systems aren't working. So pretty much all of my experience has been in the open world, exploring, creating little challenges and races for myself, and also doing some customization. I feel like I just haven't been able to sink my teeth into the proper gameplay loop that the devs intended. So far, I do like the progression though. I love that Frim has returned and is a valid way to make some extra cash, and I like that you can earn experience and rewards just by exploring, which is actually how I learned pretty much all of my experience so far. Early on, the income seems well balanced to the point where a new car purchase will actually mean something, and that's so important to me. Obviously, games like Horizon get a lot of crap for just kind of throwing dozens of rare and expensive cars at you all the time, which makes each individual car feel much less valuable. Whereas Solar Crown, again just in this early impression, feels like it really does treat each car as an important purchase and part of your garage. Something to be earned instead of just handed out for free. The individual vehicle customization though, kind of as expected, isn't super in depth. And this has never been TDU's strong suit. You do have access to a decent livery editor, can change window tint and have a handful of aftermarket wheels, and of course in traditional TDU fashion, you you can also change the interior color, which is all nice to see, but beyond that there isn't much you can do with the visuals, and I would like to see more aftermarket wheels at the least. The performance upgrade system is also fairly arcadey and pretty similar to maybe Need for Speed Heat or Unbound. There's an overall class and performance rating score that each car has, and you can buy a handful of individual parts to either just flat out upgrade the car, or alter it between different driving focuses, like swapping to off-road tires. There's also a kind of light tuning system that gives each car a handful of different driving modes based on what the car in theory should be good at. I also love that driving assists like traction control and ABS are on a slider instead of just a binary on or off. But as a Horizon nerd, I would love to see a more granular tuning and upgrade system that allows for more freedom and customization. What we have in Solar Crown is better than any other TDU game, for sure. And time will tell, maybe this system will grow on me and have some more depth than it initially presents, but for now, it does come off as a bit too simple for my tastes. And that's pretty much everything that's stuck out to me so far. The handling is good not great, the audio has been amazing so far, the map is well detailed and fun, but small and lacking NPC life, and while the progression seems promising, the gameplay loop is tough to judge because the servers are getting hammered and the racing just isn't working. All in all though, honestly, this demo has improved my interest and confidence in the game. There is a lot to like here, and I think this could be a real shakeup to the racing game market. But the biggest thing holding most players back, the always online aspect, is still not giving people a lot of confidence. If they don't knock that out of the park, the game just won't work. It is very important to state that this is still a pre-release, early version of the game, and things like performance and network optimization are almost always the last steps in development. But I want to feel more confident about the critical online systems in Solar Crown, and KT Racing still just hasn't quite been able to deliver on that for me. Folks, thanks for watching this video. Check out the demo on PC if you haven't already. 
And if you've been playing, let me know what your thoughts are. I think I might do another closing thoughts video at the end of this demo period and pick out some comments from this video that I want to address. So definitely let me know what you all think and I'll see you in the next video.